Hey everyone, welcome back to String Cheese and Applesauce, where today I'm going to share a building technique with you on how to make your Lego walls a little bit more sturdy and or stable. So, as a kid, what's the first thing they always do when they see Lego bricks? Is they just start stacking them and make a tower. Um, what kid has not ever done this? And they, they, they just keep going and going and going and going and, and while Lego is one of the most uh, sturdy little construction toys ever, you can probably stack thousands of these bricks in the compression force, which is gravity pushing down on these bricks, will never ever crush these bricks. You see, I'm, I'm pushing down, and granted I'm not using a lot of force, but I'm pushing down on them, and it's, in the, it's a very strong construction. Now, there's also, so that's your, basically your compression strength. So that your, the, the bricks are being compressed and you can see they're holding up really well. Well then there's, there's other forces, just structural loads that, that happen here. And the, the other one is a tensile strength. And that's basically stretching. So obviously the bricks, when they're on their side like this, when you stretch them, they, they lose that little connection grip. And most of the time when you build, you usually build from the top up, so your, your studs are facing up, so you usually don't run into that, that tensile strength option very often, unless you've got a, a plate or something that's hanging off to the side, one of those little modified plates with studs on the side, then you may have to worry about this tensile strength. But the, the main load that you run into with towers or, or walls is what's called the, the lateral forces. And what lateral forces are, it is the, the stress putting horizontally on a wall. So while this is extremely strong pushing down, you can see as I push it down, if I tap my finger right here, what's going to happen? The, the, the tower then breaks right in half because there's not a lot of strength with those those lateral loads. So you can see I'm just kind of pushing to the side and the bricks are coming off. So while Lego has an extremely high compression strength, it is extremely weak when it comes to these lateral loads. And I saw Kevin F, I think his YouTube channel is the original minifig. He's building a scale model of the um, Empire State Building and he had these huge walls and the, my question to him was how are you addressing your lateral forces um, and he said well don't worry about it because you know you can stack thousands of bricks on top and they won't they won't break and I was like well that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about this force pushing on the side like that and he's like well I'm not really sure you know so one way you can do it is obviously put a lot of plates in between your walls like this. So as soon as you start adding some sort of structural grid to it, it, it helps that load a lot. You can see I'm pushing on this and while it's still there, you can see it's starting to bow a little bit. It does help it significantly. Now that helps if you've got a lot of layers, but if you're building a tower, what you need is some lateral bracing. So one easy way to do it, extremely easy, is these modified uh, bricks with Technic pins on the side and you connect a Technic beam. So just adding those two extra pieces plus the, the beam there, you can see that that load, that force is then um, compensated for so that it's no longer there. So you can um, take this apart now. Also pushing on this beam on the other side more or less prevents that from bowing out that way. Now if I put my finger right here in front, which is in front of this beam, you can see it still has that little bit of bowing out of it. You see right there. But it doesn't quite come apart because remember there's these pins in there that are holding it together. So if you want to build a taller tower, these, these Technic connections are extremely strong, so 
that can get a little bit hard to take apart. You can add a few more, another one, and let's see if I can get another. And the, obviously I'm just kind of doing this on the fly, but you could easily figure out how many exactly you need. But you can see now, I basically have this column, which is some one by two bricks stacked all the way up. And I can stack this so high now with these Technic beams connected to it and not have to worry about those forces. So this tower is actually taller than the one I was showing you where I was pushing and it was just toppling over because now we've made this so strong with just these bricks with the little Technic pins and a, and a beam back there that nothing I can do pushing on that will make these bricks come apart. So that is how you build a tower without worrying about it tapping it and it falling over. If I take, let me show you real quick, same tower, I'm just taking this Technic beam off. Same tower, no beam, holding it there, like that. I barely had to touch it. Now I am, I am pushing it down right here a little bit, So because you gotta imagine this, this tower stacked up really high. So I'm pushing a little bit of force down here, and then it topples right over. So I add this one Technic piece right there, and I am actually hitting it, and that is not falling over. So that, Kevin F., the original minifig, is how you build a Empire State Building without worrying about your large, tall walls falling over. Add a little bit of lateral bracing, and you will be good. So that's it for this build technique. I know it was a little long, and we got into some technical jargon, but I hope that helps you build some cool mocks Build some real tall tower walls without worrying about them toppling over. There you go. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.